Hello and welcome back to episode number 62 of the TNC podcast. Sitting next to me this week, some say is the best man to come out of Anglia Television. High praise indeed, considering <laughs> it's a company that's also produced the likes of Robert Butler. It's Mr. Dan O'Hagan. Good evening. Good, good to see you, my friend. Pleasure, real pleasure. Um, Great one to be of here. the few days where you're not in Germany or in a, in a travel lodge somewhere. That's right, yeah. Um, I was in Germany the weekend doing two games in the Bundesliga. Um, I'm off today. Tomorrow I was asked to go to Dublin, but I've mm. said no to that. And so yeah, just very busy, and uh, which is great. But a bit of kind of downtime is always uh, always welcome. As Slightly well. offended that the last time we asked you on, you said yeah, I'd love to do it. I think you then turn us down for was it Armenia, Faroe Islands, or something like that. No, <laughs> worse than that, Gibraltar, Faroe Islands. Gibraltar, Faroe Islands. Okay. Yeah. Should I take that as an insult? <laughs> Ask my bank manager. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, good to see you. Um, Thank you, sir. Back from the, the 90th birthday party that you Absolutely. were celebrating instead of watching Big up City. Big up G-Mar. Was, it, was, it, was there scenes? Yeah. Yeah, there was a Romanian um, <laughs> entertainer from, from a circus, actually, who was um, doing all sorts of um, juggling and, and magical I saw things. some plate spinning. Yeah, all sorts of Romanian stuff. plate spinning. That's, yeah. that's quite a niche yeah. entertainment, isn't it? Um, anyway, Dan, Norwich, fifth in the table. Yeah. Seven unbeaten, five wins in a row. We all knew this, this was going to happen at some point, though, didn't we? Did we? No, I think Daniel Farker's getting things right, slowly but surely. I think his first season was always going to be a very difficult learning curve and all that, but I think we're seeing progress has been made and mm. you know, clean sheets, winning games. OK, it's not the most exciting football yet, but um, wins are wins. And we know in this division, the championship, it's so tight. A run of three or four wins and you're suddenly right up there, aren't you? Mm. So it looks good at the moment, but let's not kind of count our chickens. Some tough games coming up, but um, yeah, the signs are encouraging. Chris, one of them seven games unbeaten was Wickham on, on Tuesday night. A Jordan Road hat trick. Yeah. I mean, this cup competition has been very kind to Mr. Fark, hasn't it? Well, I'm actually quite excited by the fact that we're effectively playing our first team in the cup and our mm. second team in the league at the moment. <laughs> if you look at the likes of, of Todd Cantwell, Max Aarons, Jamal Lewis, I mean, these, these players at the start of the season, you would have said... That'll be the cup team, mm. but they're making such an impression on the on the main stage. And if you've got Jordan Rhodes as, as a plan B in the cup, yeah. I mean that's <laughs> that's only going to be a positive, isn't it? And I think we could go quite far. I really do. I, I like the look of Bournemouth. I do. I think they're very very beatable. Um, and I'd, I'd love to see us go far in the, in the cup this season. Dan, some stats on on Daniel Farker's sort of Carabao Cup. He scored three or more goals in six league mm. out of seven games under Farker. Scored in each of their last thirteen league cup games or Carabao Cup games or Worthington Cup games, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and unbeaten in ninety minutes in the last thirteen Carabao Cup games. I mean, is it because this competition isn't being taken as seriously by some, or is it because Norwich City are the greatest team on earth? <laughs> I think it's probably that, isn't it? <laughs> no, I just think the the League Cup, I think Norwich have had a fairly kind few draws the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Um, home games with you know fairly low-key opposition mm. in the last um, few seasons, in the first and second rounds especially. But look, it's going well. And you know, to get games where he can play the squad players and get Jordan Rhodes scoring a hat-trick, when we know mm. Team 2 with Pookie's made that first team show he's owned with his display this season pretty much. I think it's very healthy. I think um, you know the more cup games they can have, the more game time they can give to these fringe players, and and that's a good thing. So let's have the go. You know, a fair win of the league cup, but uh, fourth round against Bournemouth, and mm. you know, there's a chance there. Question for a seasoned commentator: Pookie or Pookie? Pookie. Teimo or Timu? I say Timu. Timu okay. Pookie. Okay. Teimo. That sounds like a Pokemon. A, a really bad one at that. <laughs> I think Timu Pookie or Pookie just sounds like a Pokemon in general. Doesn't Pookie it? boy. It's yeah. Pookie. Yeah. The Carabao Cup, Chris, um, we'll move on to the league in a moment. Last year for us, we done well in it. Um, should have really beaten Arsenal. It ended up becoming sort of the hindrance in our season, though. We, you know, players were injured. We then went on that horrific run off the back of playing Arsenal. Mm. Yeah. Cup competitions, what do you make of them for a club like Norwich? Well, I think I think if you just reflect back on, on that last campaign, I thought that um, Daniel Farker went all guns blazing. He... he Definitely wanted to make an impression in his first season. He thought Arsenal, perfect opportunity. I remember him starting Nelson Oliveira when he was already a little bit injured. I think by the end, I remember mm. watching him literally just limping around, dragging yeah. his leg behind him. Um, Much like a, what a fit Nelson Oliveira does as well. <laughs> no comment. But for me, I think that what that 
that cup campaign did last season is that it got the fans on side. It made us believe that something could happen. Yeah. It gave us something to buy into. I mean, that cup game against Chelsea as well last season where it went down to the penalty shootout, that was really exciting. Um, so, yeah, but I, for a club like Norwich, I, I, I think it's nice if we do well. I'll be very, very satisfied if we, if we get anywhere near the quarterfinal. Um, but for me, it, it's not the priority at the moment. But you know what? He's mentioned that he plays the first team in the, in, in the League Cup. The Germans take cups very seriously. Yeah, um, right. their own DFB Pokal, but the German Cup always play a full team pretty mm-hmm. much. So maybe Farker, they don't have a League Cup anymore as such, but maybe he sees the cup being maybe more important than a, an English or British yeah. coach would. Why? Why is that then? Why did? Why did Germans someone needs someone needs to tell him. To Germans only points. play thirty four league games. Okay. So there's a lot less league matches to play, mm. and um, you know, they, but they do take their cup, the DFB Pokal, very seriously. Yeah. And um, again, maybe that's why he plays strong teams in the league cup, and maybe the FA Cup as well. It's interesting, Chris. I know Wickham have been quite a high-scoring team this season, and so you know, conceding three to them isn't the end of the world. But the midfield changed. Was that the undoing for Norwich? Was that the reason we looked slightly um, fragile? On Tuesday night, it's just it's just the cup, isn't it? It's a, it's a trip away from home, and 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 the pressure was completely on us. I mean, I don't think Wickham had anything to worry about. They could just play football, mm. try and cause some damage, and try and cause some issues, and they did that. Mm. I think that you know, I think one of the things that you highlight that Arsenal game, and we've said it many a time on this podcast, is that City are playing well against the teams that want to play football, mm. apart from Leeds United. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, for me, Wickham was just one of those games, really. Yeah. All right, let's move on to to the to the game that kind of mattered last week. Wigan, um, Wigan doing very well. Mm. Down they were, I think they were second or third before we played them, going very very well under Paul. Two Cook. wins on the bounce. Mm. Um, that's a that's a, a hearty championship win. I'll call it that. Yeah, I mean to win with a late penalty, very gritty from what I gather. Um, and Wigan are a good team. Paul Cook's got them playing some terrific football, mm. and they are. What they are, they're a team who are well worth a place in the upper reaches. But I, it shows that kind of new Norwich that these games that were maybe going to be drawn nil nil last season, mm. the games now mm. they're, they're nicking by a single goal. Okay, it's a penalty, but you know these are games that they weren't winning last season. And that again, mm. I think shows there is a, a corner that's been turned by mm. Daniel Farker in the team this season. I like that from Dan. A new Norwich City. It feels that way at the moment, doesn't it? There's something tangible about this mm. squad that is slightly different to last season. Just tr- oh, I want to get carried away with it, but I'm trying not to. And get carried just, away. No, I, get you, carried you, away. You know I love that, Jack. But I'm, I've got your head on for once in this podcast, and I'm thinking October. You're thinking Derby. That. Yeah, there's 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 a change. <laughs> Derby, Stoke, and then after that, who have we got? I forgot. I think there's. I think I'm not sure the order, but there's Brentford, there's Villa thrown in there. It's a, it's a tough. October. There's some tough, tough games coming up. Um, I think you know Derby will be up there. They'll they'll be there or thereabouts. Frank Lampard's Derby. They will though. And then Stoke as well. They've, so had, a, they've we'll, had a shaky start. They, they will click at some point. That score is too good to where they are. Absolutely. So, for me, I think the, the, the real test comes now. I think Wigan, that was a great test. And mm. Daniel Farkas ticked and passed 100%. But now, this is where we're going to see the real... And actually, uh, what I will be positive about is that we're playing uh, a, not our first team, really. You know, we've got Steepman in there kind of covering at the moment, who, by the way, has been absolutely brilliant. He has been fantastic. Um, you know, we're, we're missing an El Hernandez. Um, we're not even starting Jordan Rhodes. Mm. Um, Pookie's been fantastic, mind. But it's, it's just fascinating that we, we, we've we got injuries. Mm. Kenny McLean as well. Mm. I thought that when he came on against Birmingham, he was the man that, mm. that, that got us that draw. And I think it's so exciting to see that We've got two massive players there to come back into the fold that will hopefully win games like against Stoke. Look like at the squad Starbuck. now, I and mean, it was a year ago. How deep the squad is now? There's yeah, yeah sure. covering, good sure. covering every position pretty much. Yeah. Mm. Dan, you're always the man that when we make one of these obscure German signings, people go straight to your <laughs> Twitter feed. They're like, if O'Hagan <laughs> thinks he's good, I'm believing it. The likes of Chris mentioned there, Stieperman starting yeah. to turn his form around, Vrancic, Marich Leitner really starting to click. Daniel Farker's signings are starting to to, to to play the way he thought they would. Yeah, and also, I think the mark of a good coach is one who improves players, and all those players yeah. have improved under, under Farker. Yeah. Um, so that's good, but I think going down that German route was always going to take time. It took Huddersfield almost a full, full year under under Wagner to get their, yeah. kind of, their, their form to where they were last season. So um, I think we're seeing now the kind of fruits of, of Farker's labours and mm. those players you mentioned are improving and, and parts of a very important squad now and um, all doing well. What's the kind of German culture surrounding um, 
players changing positions because we've mm. seen it with Morris Lightner now playing deeper. Steeperman, mm. I was reading an article that the EDP put out today. Apparently, was was played as sort of a striker, then a left back, mm. then a central midfielder. Now he's a I don't know what he is now, just a good player. Um, look, you saw Louis Thompson coming at right back. Farker mm. seems to like to change positions. I, I think he? that the, the European thing is that players, as young players, train in most positions. The famous Ajax Academy, mm. I think they mm. train in every single position. So eventually they'll find their position but they can play in all of them right. so maybe that's the same thing with, with German players but um, they're all on the ball very assured very comfortable so that they can play a whole range yeah. of positions and I think that's that's good for the squad to have players like Stiegmann who can fit into a, a whole load of roles and do them all pretty well yeah. and Chris defensively looking a lot more solid as well Tim Krul starting to improve great to see also Remy Matthews making his debut at Bolton I was the waiting weekend. for the Remy um, part, yeah. and, and getting a clean sheet there but Tim Krul starting <laughs> to turn into the player we all thought he could be yep and, and Zimmerman as well, stepping in. We all thought it was the end of the world when Handley was out injured. Zimmerman steps in. I Fantastic. Didn't, I didn't think it was the end of the world. When you've got a player um, like the Zim that's there <laughs> to cover for you, highly praised by someone with the footballing knowledge of Arsene, Arsene Wenger, why would you be worried? I think Christoph Zimmerman is fantastic physically. Now and then he makes the odd mistake, but I think all defenders do. Yeah. But I don't think it's the centre-back pairing. I don't think it's Tim Krul coming to play. I think it's Max Ahrens, and I think it's Jamal Lewis. I think that those two on either side, they, they, give this, they, they relieve a lot of pressure on the centre-backs. The centre-backs can send them on their way, and you know the best form of, of defence is, is, of course, attack. Mm. And, and, and I think that they, they do that ridiculously well. Fantastic introduction for, for Max Ahrens and Jamal Lewis, Todd Cantwell as well. Is there a risk of possibly playing them too much? We saw um, Aaron's pulled after 70 minutes on Saturday. I mean, how how quickly can you bed these types of players That's in? the thing, you know, young players, you risk burnout if you yeah. play them too much too soon. But I think certainly Jamal Lewis has had almost a year now in the first team, pretty much December yeah. came in last yeah. year. Um, so he's now almost an established first team player. Mm. Um, Aaron's has played only a handful of games, but um, it shows that the academy is working really well. All the, all the talk was the, the FA Youth Cup team, not many came through. Yeah. Suddenly there are players yeah. from the academy mm. all over the place. Yeah. And maybe that's down to Farker, just putting some trust in these players yeah. and saying, OK, I'll have a chance. I'll, I'll have or is it Weber as well? So, yeah, everyone is praising Daniel Farker for bringing the youth players. And I'm, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm on Daniel Farker's back a bit too much at the moment, but... I find I'm going to find it really interesting to see how Stuart Webber plays out the next few windows because yes, I think Daniel Farker wants the blood in young players. Yes, it's working. Yes, the fans love it. But I've got this thing in the back of my mind that is there a bit more of a sinister, deeper lying. Hello, look how much money we sold James Madison for. Mm. Hello, look how much we sold Jacob, Josh, yeah. young English players. They're worth the big bucks. Of course, I hope it doesn't happen, and I hope that anyone that's watching this podcast that's involved in football do not buy Max Aaron's, do not buy Jamal Lewis. But I, I don't know. I'm just thinking in my head there. There could be a bit of a non-footballing reason as well. Hopefully, there's not. Whether well, that's advocate. right or not, Dan. Though the, the culture has clearly changed, yeah. and the culture for what we want it to do either way is working. Yeah, it is. I think as well. It's almost kind of not even by design in that the players they played. Uh, bought to play in those positions like James Husband mm. weren't good enough. Yeah. So it's like, oh, well, what do we do now? Play of the season, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? So you know, they kind of go the youth team and the, and the academy and bring players through that way. But um, it's almost been kind of almost forced on them. But I think you know, it just shows that if you give young players a chance, sometimes it can work out for you. And it's doing. It's an honour to time. them. It's an honour. It's a genuine honour. I mean, you see it, and even just I know everyone celebrates goals, you know, like like mad. But you can just see it in their eyes when they're celebrating a goal, how much it means mm. and the passion behind it. And they value every single second on the football pitch. And I think that, that is, is the reason yeah. why Norris City are winning games of football at the moment. And, and Todd Cantwell's an interesting one, Chris, isn't it? Because Ana Hernandez, arguably our best player went before he got injured this season, out and out winger, direct to replace him. We bring in Todd Cantwell, quite an intricate player, not much pace about him. Fuck has clearly installed a lot of trust into, into Cantwell there to say, look, you can go out and you can go and fill that that gap left by Hernandez big step up for Cantwell uh, yeah definitely um, all, although I said it you know when we were watching um, Cantwell um, I believe when he played against Chelsea in the cup last season he looks so impressive he's got so much confidence and he is of a similar ilk to James Madison in the way he plays his touch the way that he's pulling you in he's pulling you out he's not afraid to take an extra turn he's clearly learnt from the magician himself Wes Houlihan and, and I think that you know, I, I love that. I love the fact that Todd's on, and um, and actually, I don't think is as much of a step up as we're all thinking. Actually, mm. I think that 
he's been kind of in the mixer for a while and I think that now he's, he's just been pushed mm. here you go Todd your turn yeah. and he's absolutely nailing it at the moment and I suppose the important question with Todd Dan is is the haircut I know you're a man that, <laughs> that rates a haircut highly the man bun where do you stand with the man bun I have never had one myself okay. um, I think I'm too old for that do now, you think you could so... pull it off I don't think so. No. no, no, no. You definitely could. <laughs> um, I think, you know, certainly um, as a player, to come in um, to the team the way he's done and play with that confidence, um, he looks a player, doesn't he? He does. You've avoided the question there. Like <laughs> That's, okay, though. Aren't... That's okay, though. Yeah. He's allowed to avoid questions. Man bun. <sighs> what, do, what do we think? Zero interest. Love Toddy. <laughs> Absolute baller, but my God. Awful, but awful, yes. awful decision. Yeah. Um, Dan, I think it's 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 fair for football fans to get carried away. We don't have too yeah, much to get is, excited yeah. about. However, we are currently closer to 14th position than we are top of the table, Ooh. despite being fifth. A very tough October coming up, thanks to Norwich City numbers on, on Twitter. Our last four Septembers, this month hasn't been an anomaly. 23 games played out of our last four Septembers. 17 wins in that period. Mm. Only one defeat. That was when we were 3-1 up going into the Newcastle game in the 85th minute. Dwight Gale scored. That was the only loss. October coming up, I suppose by the end of October, we'll really see where Norwich City lie. Yes, I think certainly the autumn period is one which does kind of make or break seasons. But you mentioned the games coming up, they are difficult. But Mm. if they are to be contenders, these are games they've got to win or at least take points from. Um... You know, the games they've had in the last month, have they been the toughest games on paper? You'd say probably not, uh, leads apart. Um, but certainly you look now at uh, the derbies, Brentford are a good side as well this season. Yeah. And this month, I think, is going to tell us really where Norwich are. Mm. Um, if the kind of hype of being fifth is worthwhile or whether they are just mm. maybe a little in a position which is a little inflated above where they really should be at the moment. Chris, only one team in the championship remains without a win. Can you name that team for me? Ipswich Town. Yeah. I said, you know, all Ipswich our Town season. or Ipswich Down. <laughs> Mick, well, McCarthy, oh, Mick McCarthy. Mick McCarthy. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. You know that man was keeping a, a team with no money, average players, no investment, no fans in that division, and you know, comfortably. Now he's gone. They went down the, the, the Hurst route, and you know, I fear for them. They've been my tip from day one to go down this season, and that's for no other reason than I think on the field they're just not not up. Yeah, to get your money on them going down. 100%. You think? 100%. John Walters was always going to be an interesting signing, wasn't it? Six months out now with an Achilles problem. Yeah, a gamble, but experience. You know, They obviously went for a player who... Uh, who they knew, needed who, it. They needed it. Who knew the club, who yeah. had experience, but you know, it's, it's a gamble. And at, at that age, you know, injuries take a mm. long to heal. And it's... it's a shame to see. It's, it is a real shame to see them suffering. Um, you know, it is a real shame. Good. Um, using my journalistic instinct, uh, cool. I, was on, I was on the hunt today. And am I right in saying, Dan, that you were once a postman? For one summer, yes. <laughs> Where was that from? Well, you know, I know, I know people. <laughs> okay, I know one, people. one summer in the Midlands when I was a student um, to make some money for university, I had um, six weeks as a student postman um, in Hales Own in the West Midlands in a really rough estate, so um, big tower blocks, and I saw things and heard things that I'd never want to hear again. How did you find it? Because that was actually, when I was growing up, my dream job, to be a postman. I love <sighs> receiving letters you know, and sending you know letters. You know what was great? It. By one o'clock, you're finished. Really. Yeah. Okay, you start at four. Yeah. yeah. But by one o'clock, the day's yours. Mm. And it's, um, yeah, it was, it was good fun. And because you're a student, you don't pay tax. So money-wise, mm. it was, whoa, happy yeah. days, you know? Living paid, the dream as the postman. Paid, paid for a few student nights out the next year, I'll tell you that much. But it was, yeah, it was good fun. So, Chris, my question here is, yeah. what Norwich City players reminded you most of a postman this season in terms of a player that constantly delivers? <laughs> this season? Oh, it has to be Timmy Pukki, doesn't it? Pukki. Pukki, sorry, Pukki. Pukki, yeah. Or P- Pukki. 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 I think Michael Bailey is being saying, I'm sure he's being saying Tamal Pukki. Yeah, like, but he yeah. just likes yeah, to get Bailey posh with that kind of yeah. stuff. Tamal. Apparently. Tame out is definitely more of a Pokemon than, than a footballer. So Pookie yeah, for you. Pookie, one hundred percent. He is the postman in our side this season. By the way, Tom Huckabee, mm. you're getting closer and closer to your ass being tattooed with Pookie, Pookie. twenty. Sorry, Pookie, <laughs> twenty two on, on on your rear end. I look forward to seeing that. Mr. Hagen, um, can't go for Pookie. I want another. <sighs> the player who's delivered this season. I think Steeperman. I mean, yeah. to come in and and play the roles he's done. Um, and a player who was a fringe player last season wasn't that popular. Yeah. I mean, to win the fans over the way he's done, I think it's terrific. That. And um, a player who, yeah, has uh, become a really important squad member. Moritz Leitner as well, Chris. I think 
we all knew that there was a great player in there, and I think some were starting to get frustrated. There hadn't been a goal for a while. There hadn't been an assist for a while. Mm. That partnership he's formed with Alex Tete has been crucial, hasn't it? Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm pleased it's happening. Um, I, I definitely think I'd love to see Tommy Tribal in there over Alex Tete still for me. Um, but look, there's no denying that those two are creating a, a fantastic mm. partnership. It's very interesting to see much like in the play, play, playing deeper but ultimately he's the playmaker he's the one that, that's making the decisions he's the one that's probably a wee bit more intelligent mm-hmm. on the pitch he's the one that's pulling the strings so effectively it is better that he's back with Tete because no offence to Alex but bless him he's just passing it to the side isn't he he's just giving it and then that, that's okay but if he's giving it to the side to Morwich he can then play yeah. the through ball that, that you need so uh, long may it continue you're a big fan of Alex Tete though huge, I saw your huge tweet fan I think his importance to Norwich is immense, mm. and having him for you know, this season as well, I think he's a, he's a player that when he plays, Norwich just have a more solid feel, mm. and you can kind of rest easier when he's in the team because he can just protect things. And don't you get yeah, that with Tribal though? You do, but I think Teddy is is an experienced player. He's he's never let Norwich down. But um, not the Tribal. He never gives the ball away. <laughs> true, true. Um, as I say, covering in all positions, so it, it's a deep squad. Tom will get his chances this season as Alex will. I just, I just think. I, I, by the way, I love Alex Tete. I think he's a fantastic personality, great captain, great guy to have around the club. You know, it's just a good point about he, Tete. He needs more to him. He, he breaks up play, and he and he's a character. And I love the video yeah. that, of course, we, oh, we shared. It's a the great video. Yeah? Mm. When I was working for the, the Premier League um, at Norwich in, in the fifteen sixteen season, Tete would come along and do press conferences, mm. and they were great. You could guarantee at least one swear word yeah. every time. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> so, so good. Yeah. Um, another player that's delivered, certainly in recent weeks, Mario Vrancic. Um, a, a surprise a, a, one a, for a, me. A great goal against Reading. Yeah. Taking that penalty, I must admit, I was like Tete Stephen. I turned, I turned cool, around, I couldn't it? believe yeah. it. Straight down the middle, cool as you like. Well, look, I mean, Russ, Russ said to me, there's, there's two players that I, I feel have got something. Right, Mario Vrancic was one of them. Nelson Oliveira was the other one. They've clearly got the talent, but it's just about how do we utilise them and and where do we play them and who do we play them against? And and as Dan has said, I think that Danny Farker is starting to understand that now. It's so healthy though mm. because we've got so many options. And look, if Mario Vrancic is lo- is knocking on the door, absolutely fantastic. Although. Of course, Timu um, did generously give that to, to Vrancic, So That whole penalty situation, there was, there was a lot of narratives coming from that, wasn't there? There was the fact that Pookie was the original penalty mm. taker. Rhodes was the second. Rhodes said, no, I don't want it. He, of course, missed a penalty earlier on that mm. season down that end. Respect that, by the way. So Mario steps up. I think it had been a year since he, he'd last taken a penalty. And, and you were a man that, that loved Mario Vrancic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and even he's starting to, to come through now. Because yeah. Norwich fans had written him off, including myself, halfway through last season. He was almost a forgotten man, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Um, but he's, he's come back really well. I saw him play a lot for Darmstadt, who were a dreadful team. I mean, a team Only you would down. say that, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite. Yeah. A team, I love that. A team that went down two years ago in the Bundesliga. But even in a struggling side, a poor team that didn't play much football, mm. he really stood out. Mm. And I had no doubt that he would come over here and be a success. It's taken time, and he, he's perhaps not there yet. But I think there's enough there with Vrancic to kind of get look behind and say this guy is a player who can make a contribution this season and as you saw at the weekend important moments and a decisive goal against um, Wigan another forgotten man that I don't know if we'll see much of again I think out of all of them was the highest rated by you Felix Paslak strange thing strange thing I mean this is a young guy who in Dortmund's under 19s was phenomenal Mm. they called him the next Marco Royce Mm. he he was that good um, they, I think they they won the under nineteen league three years ago. He scored like nineteen goals in that season. Terrific. What was he playing? Right winger. Wow. Okay. Um, got in the first team. Played a couple of games um, for Dortmund. Was then loaned to Hoffenheim last year. Now Hoffenheim were a team who'd finished uh, fourth. They had big ambitions of Champions League football. They didn't get past the, the qualifiers, but he played the first couple of games of the season. Then boom, he was bombed out by mm. uh, by, by the coach Nagelsmann. So he failed there, and I think Dortmund thought this is a guy who maybe. That level was too much for a season. Comes over to England to the, the second tier of the championship and he's not really kicked on now. He's a player who's got all the ability in the world. I mean, he's a really good footballer. But you just wonder if there's something up here which mm. means that he can't, he can't really kick on away from big, big club like Dortmund. And maybe he mm. thinks that Dortmund is a team that he should be at and Norwich has a step mm. down, Hoffenheim has a step down last season. So you do wonder, but his ability is there. 
Yeah. And maybe Fargo can get it. Well, there's a reason that you, you think there's a reason why they let, they, they are letting players like Lightner go. There's a reason why they're letting players like Felix Pazlak go because there's clearly something. But for me, I think the the, the Felix Pazlak story is actually more about Jamal and Max. I think yeah. that's a fair uh, point. It's as way well. more yeah. about them than him. I think I've no yeah. doubt that he's performing in training. I've no doubt he's putting 100 percent effort in. But for me, it, there's no way that they're going to get in the way of, of Max Aaron's and, and the Norfolk Marcelo. It's just not going to happen. Mm. It's just not going to happen. Right on to our favourite part of the week. It is the Twitter questions from our lovely listeners. The first is from David Minister. Now we always like to read the bio. Oh, David Minister used to be a postman. Well, there we go. There's postman a, connection. It's a, a nice link there, isn't yeah. it? Lovely um, fireman and a massive. How can you be a postman and a fireman? I think, am I right saying that Fireman work part-time? Uh, I think you can be on call, can't you? I th- think so. He is serving his local community. Good old David. Yeah, good old Anyway, boy. his question. The Norwich game, you wished you could have been at Dan instead of working at. I'll tell you now. It was um, 2005 when they beat Man United here. Um, the 2-0. Mm. Uh, the Leon McKenzie got the goal, didn't he, in that yeah. one? Um, 2-0 win. I was working for Match of the Day that day. One of my first games for them down at um, Portsmouth. They beat Charlton 4-2. It's the one the scorers? 4-2. I know Lamana Lawalawa got a goal. Oh, Dan, of course he did. Danny of course Mur- he did. Danny Murphy got a free kick for Charlton. Um, wow. And that's what I remember really. But that show, that game led the show that night. It was also the night that John Thaxton fought and won the world title. Because I asked okay. to commentate on that for Radio Norfolk. Couldn't do that. So I missed the Norwich game and I missed a world championship boxing commentary mm. for that. On the, on, the, on the fine BBC as well. I oh, suppose you had a match of the day. Yeah. The lead on match of the day is not too bad. <laughs> not too bad at all. Next up, Willemotts, our uh, lovely listener. This is, of course, the daily life of contract groundsman. Come rain or sun, weeds will always outgrow grass. <laughs> Why is Marco Stieperman looking so good at the moment? Um, should have been man of the match on Saturday. Although, I'm slightly confused. What is his position on the pitch? Um, there you go. What, what is his position? Why? We don't need to debate this. We what? brought this up last time. What? Who cares? We keep all the fans are moaning that Daniel Fargo doesn't know his position. Who cares? We need something to Dan says about. it. He can play anywhere. That's it. I mean, these players are schooled to be, you know, able to play most positions, and he looks good everywhere, Steve Man. So, yeah, he's a player that Norwich, I think, are lucky to have because Embrace he's yeah, enjoy his versatility. But we we say that lightly. This was a player who we all thought was dead. Well, not literally dead, but dead at Norwich City. Similar to Mario Vrancic last season, it's credit to these players and it's credit to Daniel Farker to turn things around, Chris, isn't it? It is. Sorry, just your, your extreme comment there is throwing me off. Uh, he shopped in Marks the Spencers last season. Yes. Stephen, of course. Uh, maybe that is the reason why that his form has changed because he's maybe switched to, ra- to Waitrose now. Perhaps. Yeah, really awesome. got up in the world. Yeah, I, I would suspect so, yeah. I reckon he's the type who's got, got a waitress card as well to get his free coffee. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I Stings think you get free paper as well, don't you? Yeah. Um, Matt Gregory, um, does Dan feel this upturn in fortune will last or is it a blip? Also, Dan is a legend. <laughs> he was the voice of my Norwich season review VHSs back that in the early 2000s. That is perhaps 2000s. the most thin use of the word legend. <laughs> ever, <isn't it? laughs> um, nice though. Well uh, done. Is it, is it a blip? Is it a blip? Um, I hope not. But, uh, you know, it's not the most free flung or exciting football at the moment, but they're winning games. And we said earlier, this month will be a big test of, of where they are. I hope it's not a blip, and I hope they can carry on. But we know this division is so tight. The teams, there is nothing between most of them. So it's going to be tough to, you know, to be kind of up there at the end of the season. But enjoy it now. It's good early signs. And um, yeah, let's hope it isn't a blip. And they can Speaking of blips. When are Ipswich going to finally win their ne- their first game of the season, Dan? Good question. And also, you know, you look at uh, Mr Hurst down there. Mm. Um, will they keep faith with him? Well, who um, else are they going to get? Who would go there? Get, get Mick back. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> oh, imagine. He wouldn't, would he? The thing I find interesting with Ipswich is their low attendances were blamed on the style of football McCarthy was playing. It's longer ball football with, with Hurst. And had they watched Shrewsbury Town last season, they would have known that. Mm. He's, he's a long ball manager. I'm so pleased you two are saying this rather than me. <laughs> yeah. um, also, Dan, I'll, I'll elaborate on, on Matt's question. What's your favourite VHS to, to lay your voice down? I'll tell you what it was. I did the the club video of all of Ewan's 96 goals. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, um, yes. yes. We released the video on that. We did. Amazing. And I'm trying to think what it was called. It may have just been called like Ewan Roberts, not, Ewan. Not 96 goals. I think it was just called Ewan, actually, yeah. Ewan! Um, he came up with that, that's very imaginative. Nice, isn't I know. It? But yeah, so I, I did a piece of it at his house and we pulled the goals together. It was very nice. And yeah. um, 
Yeah, I think it's uh, that was my uh, top boy. Do you have boy. all of your sort of old VHS? I don't. Stored in your I, I have one there. copy of I think the 0304 season review on, on DVD. No, that, that I know, Dan. He's got a shrine. <laughs> yeah. He's got a massive shelf with his framed photos, all of the videos. Yeah. This, this, is, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. This is, of course, one of the few men who've, who, who's come on the podcast with a Wikipedia page. Yeah, you've got a Wikipedia page. Did you not know that? No, it's not. no you've got one. You I made it today. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, saluting Shrebeni. Um, some say when he scores, his hand automatically is attracted to his head, <laughs> and he's never smiled in his life. This is my favourite Twitter. All account. we know is he's called Shrebeni. Um, with the form of Tim Close and Christoph Zimmerman, do we give Tim Close a new contract, or is leaving, uh, or is him leaving, a chance for Ben Godfrey or someone like him to get into the first team? Good point. I think Tim Close is a very assured player. We know that, but um, he'll also be a big earner. And yes. you do wonder if Norwich could afford a new contract for Tim Close. So there'll be certainly offers from the Bundesliga, I think, to go back to Germany. Um, and match the wage. And at least match the wage, if okay. not give him more oh, wow. in Germany. Okay. So I think a closer contract may well depend a lot on how deep the club's pockets are. Okay. And that may depend on where they are in the table. In I, think of... Tim, I think Tim will definitely want it more than Norwich do. Okay. 100%. It's very well documented how much he loves the city, but as Dan says, you know, when when there's a club back home that are willing to pay that sort of money, you know, it makes sense for the club to move him on. I want I want to see young blood um, in there, and and I love I love Tim as a guy, I love him as a player, I love him on social media, but for me, I, I still look at we we signed him as this kind of player that can that can pass the ball, that's comfortable. Yes, he is. But for me, he still makes far too many mistakes. That's just my honest opinion mm. of him. And I certainly don't see him as leadership material. And Dan so, Salutin so Shrebeni raises the point here of Ben Godfrey. Now, mm. this is a fascinating case, isn't it? Whenever Ben's been introduced into the team, whether that be the cup competition or, or pre-season, he was fantastic. Yeah. Excellent at Shrewsbury last season. Good, under yeah. The fantastic leadership of Paul Hurst. Yeah. <laughs> well, and now worked, can't get a He learned to kick the ball very high in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Ben Godfrey, though, what, where, where does his situation lie at the moment? Where does he play? I mean, it's you know a case of best position because he can play centre back, he can play in midfield as well. Um, he's a player mm. who's got immense ability mm. um, at, at a young age. Um, can you risk playing a player in the back four or if he plays a back three <clears throat> at that age in this division? I don't know. Did um, he well against Ipswich, of course? Yes, he did. He did, um, and we know he's a very good natural footballer. But I just, I, I just think that um, time. Yeah, it probably needs another year Agreed. at this level before he really kicks on and totally becomes a, a first team starter in the championship. But if you're Ben Godfrey, Chris, you're surely thinking I was one of the best players in League One last season. League One, still League One, did very well. Um, done well when I've been given a chance this season. Come on, Gaffer, just give me a chance. I'm ready. Yeah, but they're all like that. That's just a. I, I think just but a are bit you getting patience, frustrated? A bit of patience is is to be put in there at the moment. I don't think everyone. I think will. as well, defence you need experience, and if you're playing mm. two young fullbacks, yeah, um, and a young centre half as well, three of a four, okay. that's risky. Yeah, so I, mm. I, th- I think Godfrey very needs, true. needs a very year. True, a year, I think. Uh, Elliot Waterfield already getting worried because we're winning matches. Um, if players continue this run of form. Do we worry about them going in January or the summer? I love Norwich fans. We're winning games now. Something's let, got to yeah, be going wrong. Let, let's, let's get some pessimism in here somewhere. Um, I, I, suppose, I suppose it is where Norwich City stand as a club at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, I think Norwich at the moment, financially, we, we saw players who've moved on, uh, like, like Madison, like the Murphys. And certainly, Jamal Lewis, I think, is the one who's going to attract attention at the moment. Mm, um, looks 100%. in that position. So much at home now already as a, as a seasoned player. He's only his second season in the first team. And um, yeah, so he's a player who I'm sure they could sell. But I do think sometimes that players do move to the wrong clubs too early. Yes. The one case I always um, use is Connor Wickham at Ipswich, yeah. um, who moved for 8 million quid. Yeah. Um, and he's never been an established player in the Premier League since. Yeah. Um, where, where is he now? Is he at Palace still? Not sure. Well, he's doing well if he's there. He's <laughs> hanging on by the thread, isn't he? Mm. Palace are doing well. Um, Chris, is, is this something we should worry about, or should we just embrace the fact we've got young I, players I doing think the, so, so well? The, the reason why I brought it up earlier is it's just quite. I find it fascinating. I'm going to be very interested in the activity in the January window. Mm. I think that there could be some some movements there, particularly because we have got so much cover mm. um, all over the pitch, as Dan's quite rightly brought up. Um, I don't think we should be worrying about it at all. I really don't. And and I th- 
I have every faith that you know the players will be told you know to to, to, to keep their heads down and, and crack on and, and train hard and work hard and it'll be fine. I suppose whether we lose players in January or not depends on our league position, though, doesn't it? Though? Yes, exactly. I think if Norwich were on the fringe of the playoffs or in the playoffs, yeah, true. Um, come come mid season, then I think if they were to sell players, then there'd be uproar. Mm. So you know, and you do think that if they were in a position to challenge then maybe they'd bring players in to, to give them more yeah. of a kick to, to get promotion because we know the stakes mm. of getting promoted now are so yeah. high and the financial rewards are incredible so yeah I think um, much will depend on where they are come that uh, yeah. window in, in January and that's a lovely link into the next question it's almost like you've done this before <laughs> Stuart Webber um, Chris said it would take four or five transfer windows to get what they want in terms of playing staff uh, and this certain brand of football, January will be the fifth transfer window for Daniel Farker and Stuart exactly, Webber. Exactly. Where do you think we stand? Are we still a million miles away or are we close to seeing the end product? I, I don't think we're a million miles away. And I think that now we should be seeing some end product. And I, I, I want to believe that we are. I don't, I don't think that the last few games are coincidence. I don't. I, I think it's, it's working and, and that's great. I do definitely think we should be seeing some end product this season. I don't think we're completely finished, but actually, everyone is thinking of this of this Norwich City project in a very black and white fashion. There's always grey space. There's never, ever, ever a ten out of ten football team. Jose Mourinho is mo- is moaning at Manchester United. Pep Guardiola is moaning at Manchester City because there's always areas in the football pitch that you, that you could improve. But for me, I think Stuart Webber has done a fantastic job. I, I don't think they're too far away. I honestly don't. And, and you think about it, you think. Of how well the young players are doing do we even need to buy players in at the moment mm. do we I don't think we do we look like we can beat anyone at the moment yeah I think the squad now is of a depth which you know a year ago people couldn't have dreamed of really mm. but and that's in part due to the young players coming through as well yeah. so uh, just by giving them a chance has given the squad suddenly this, this depth they didn't have before next question um Comes from Edmund Reamer, not the actual Edmund Reamer. Um, not Edmund Reamer, but okay. Views of my own, not Daniel's. Um, are you aware of Edmund Reamer, of his work? On the coaching staff, not massively, <laughs> but I'm aware of him. Okay, I'll throw a question at you anyway and see how you do. Um, does Edmund Reamer play a similar role on the FARC as Buvak and the Klopp? If not, how much influence does he have on FARC's tactical decisions? Well, I'm sure there is a, a, a team, you know, brains trust where they will sit down and talk about things. Farker is obviously the head coach, but you know he'd be a fool if he didn't get other mm. opinions and, and take that on board mm. because you know it's uh, you know sometimes you need voices that will be against yours and you know, to kind of help you uh, make the right decision. So it'll be a team effort, and that happens at all clubs, not not just Norwich, not just at Liverpool with Klopp, but at other clubs as well. Chris Domangala, he's was he our assistant or assistant head coach or something? Love it, his name. Um, built like an absolute brute. Um, mm. Built bigger than Christoph Zimmerman. Saw Chris Domangala and, and Christoph Zimmerman in Morrison's the other week. Bun yum yums. Okay. Not, not a snack, I thought. Interesting. Um, Toffee yum yums. No, I think they were. What's kind of, a yum yum? You don't know what a yum yum is? No, I don't know what a yum yum is. Dan, wow. well, to be fair, look at your physique. I'm not surprised. <laughs> so. um, one of the, I think that one of the biggest sellers in Greg's. They're kind um, of like a, a long donut. Yeah. Oh, man, I love it. Sort of a almost. Long donut. Do you know what yeah. a cronut is? I'm aware of what a cronut is. Yeah. Sort of a cronut, but, but a great tasty. version. So we're, we're talking deep fried with sugar no, coating. Not, not. I've never had a deep fried yum yum. So the Germans love a naughty snack. Basically, is that what you're saying, yeah, Jack? I, and that's okay if, if he keeps playing like that. Then he can continue to eat toffee yum yums. German hotels, breakfast pastries. Wow. Oh yeah. really? Wow. Yeah. What's your go-to pastry? My go-to pastry. Um, they have a really good one in Germany right now. It's like a. It's it's a. A glazed pastry stuffed with custard, and it is just top with wow. top with kiwi fruit. Ooh, that's filthy! And, and pineapple. Ooh. Goodness gracious! I mean, man. that is that's that, obscene. There's a lot of flavours going. There's on. A, yeah, but it's very very good. I'm Cust- so fine with custard that. donuts. Where what is your thoughts like with that, Chris? I, I'm okay. I'm all right with them, but it's it's always going to be about the strawberry, isn't it? Strawberry jam donut. You just can't. And I'm going to say this live on the podcast. Donuts are great, Yarmouth. The best. You, you can't. You can't beat the greatest. Five for a pound at the. You, uh, you can't beat, and they're served by that real fat old girl <laughs> that, that stinks of dead fish. But that's fine because her jam donuts are absolutely lovely. Yeah, um, one of the great things to come out of Great Yarmouth. So come to Great Yarmouth. Yeah, of course, and, and go to German bed and breakfast. I'm sure yes. you you know more than. Yes, but yeah, I do enjoy my pastries. Sunday morning, you know, early breakfast, pastries, sports papers. 
cup of coffee. Yeah. yeah. Cup of German coffee, boom. Pan, 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 pan raisin, any interest? Pan of chocolate, yes. Pan, pan, pan raisin, pan raisin too yeah. healthy? Well, little interest? Not, not my cup of tea, really. Okay. It's fascinating. I, I saw you as a cinnamon swirl type man, oh, but okay. there we go. Um, Bristol Rovers polls. Now, Dan, just to fill you in here, this is a Bristol <laughs> Rovers fan that continues to watch still to it. every <laughs> single week. Good friend of mine is a Rovers fan, and um, he used to babysit Keith Curl. Well, <laughs> babysit for Keith Curl. Right. Okay. Um, which is quite a nice little story. But there you go. Lovely. Yeah. Rovers or City? Rovers. Okay. Cool. I, I want to show him, meet, meet a guy from Bristol. And his first question was, by the throat, Rovers or City? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They take it very seriously down there. In, uh, mm. And did you answer Bristol. correctly? No, no. This was someone else. Oh, okay. Um, Rovers or City um, to a fellow Bristolian. And luckily they replied Rovers. Good. Mm. Otherwise they could well have been there. A scene. Mm, good. Um, anyway, Bristol Rovers Paul's question is, after the emergence of Jamal Lewis, Todd Cantwell and Max Ahrens, who do you think will be the next youngster to make their mark on the first team? Chris, we'll start with you. What does that mean? They're all making their mark no, on the I, first in team. No, the next one. So the next person out of the academy. Oh, okay. God, that's, really, that's a really hard question because I think they've all got an equal chance depending on who could get injured potentially. Mm. Um, every single bone in my body wants it to be Aston. Yes, so that's every what I say, single. Yeah. I, I, I really want Aston to break in. I really, but kind do. of already has. Yeah, no, 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 no absolutely. Uh, loved seeing him in the in the team photo. Which, by the way, we need to bring up Ben Marshall's facial expression in a minute. Um, for me, the most likely is probably Godfrey, isn't it? Mm. He, has he already made it? Well, he's not really made enough to be. be a first team yet, I don't think. There's a so. lot of. I'm not sure about this question, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of quantifi- quantifiable facts yeah. here. Okay. Dan, for you? Again, as an Oxford, I think, um, as, a, as a goalkeeper myself, or ex goalkeeper, I love to see kind of homegrown keepers do well here. Mm. And Norwich have got such a record of keepers coming through. And okay, not always making the grade here, but elsewhere. And um, yeah, I just think right now, I'm not a fan of Michael McGovern at all. Mm. And I might see Ax Oxford given that kind totally of chance to be the kind of that. second goalkeeper because I just think he's. He's a future which McGovern really isn't. Just just a word on, on the mighty Carlo Nash on that note. <laughs> the mighty Carlo Nash. Yeah. Just Carlo Nash. Any thoughts? In in what context? <laughs> the greatest player of the season to ever not be oh, a yeah, yeah, player yeah. of the season. That was amazing, wasn't it? Um yes. Um that just shows you should never let fans kinda of have a vote on that kind of thing. <laughs> without there being set options. Otherwise they were it's like, you know, Boaty McBoatface, isn't it? <laughs> All over again. Indeed. Yeah. The Mighty Nash. One of my favourite boats, of course. Uh, Max Broughton. Um, will we see Nelson Oliveira break into the team this season? Or do you think we'll sell in January? I think Nelson's ship has sailed. Mm. Boom. Along um, with Boaty. Yes. And along um, with the cruise ship that docked in Great Yarmouth at the weekend, of course. Oh, what are they doing, by the way? Oh, seeing the Golden Mile and eating mm. the donuts. Anyway, back to Nelson. But yeah, I think I think that's that, that horse has bolted now because... For whatever reason, he's, he's not nowhere near the first team. He's not injured anymore. Um, a player with who's got ability yeah. scored some amazing goals for Norwich, yeah. but for, you know for some reason he and Farker don't seem to mesh at all. And I think sell him on, make some money, mm. call it a day. You've got two arguments here, Chris, haven't you? Because you've got a Nelson Oliveira who has never settled at a football club, and I think you can yeah, always look at the pattern of someone's career and go, yeah, it's not kind of an anomaly that he's not settled here. On the other hand, you've got Russ Martin's comments when he left. Said one of, was one of the best trainers, one of the most talented players he's ever played mm. with. So, what is going on with Nelson? I, I, I do understand the reason why it's not worked for Nelson Oliveira so far, but I am obviously going to listen to someone that knows and is qualified to to judge a player. Mm. Russ Martin, you know, you're saying Daniel Farker isn't. No, 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 absolutely not. I, but but what I am saying is, and I, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You look at some of the best players in in, in the world that, that have played uh, that have played, and and they can be aggressive, and they can have big personalities. Deal with it, Sonny Jim. That's that's called being a head coach. That's called being a football manager. How do you work with a player with a big personality? It's not ideal. You can see it with Mourinho. Just he's, the very same thing. He's, he's struggling with yeah. Pogba now, but you just have to work with it. I mean, if you can get a player with a big personality on your team, he will bring in the gold one hundred percent. I think Nelson Oliveira, uh, I can see that he's got it. I can. I get, I get, and I'm behind the club. If they want to get rid of him, I'm totally behind it, and I get it. But I think it's a bit, 
I think fans are maybe seeing it with a bit of rose tinted glasses if they just want to say, oh no no no, he's a bad trainer. Oh no no, he's a, he's a, he's too much of a personality. Work with them. Work yeah. with them. I think with uh, Oliveira as well. The time to sell was maybe last year. Now he's not yes, paid for it. Yes, so yes. That, his price has gone down, exactly. and it's, you know you do wonder what they get from now. But you need to market. cut your losses now. You do. We, we saw it with Naismith as well. Cut your losses, please, please. Just cut your losses. Of course, I think still the top scorer in the SPL, though, Chris. Yes. Is there, is there a return for well, Naismith on the cards? Well, of course, your famous words, Jack. You know, top goal scorer for, for a central defensive midfielder is, is excellent work, isn't it? Very, very good indeed. Um, on the flip side, though, Dan. Um, <laughs> Jordan Rhodes, a yeah. completely different player yeah. to Nelson. Selfless, um, doesn't mind sitting on the yeah. bench if it means Timu Puki is, is ahead of him. I suppose when you've either got a Jordan Rhodes or a Nelson, you're probably going to go with Jordan Rhodes, you? You probably are, and I think Jordan Rhodes gives Norwich an awful lot. Um, as you say, he's very much a kind of squad person, a, a team player in mm. every sense. And if Norwich can be the club who can unlock that Huddersfield form, that Blackburn form, mm. what a player they've mm. got. Yeah. But for some reason, at the last maybe two or three clubs he's had, it's not worked out. Mm. And there must be a reason to that. So I think he's, for Norwich, to have him on your books, it's a great thing. But um, he's not the Jordan Rhodes he was. And if they can find out why and unlock that, then they have a great player on their hands. I think the more we play in this current formation, I'm struggling to see how he fits in, no. though. Because I think Jordan Rhodes, just like Nelson Oliveira, isn't a player to play up top on his own. He needs a... He needs Can't someone with him, 100%. And, and I definitely want Timu to be playing with Jordan, by the way, just to get my word in there, 100%. But if you stick with, with Farker's current stuff, which is working and I love it, I, I'm, I'm struggling to see where Jordan sadly fits in because I think he's a fantastic player and I yeah. think he's got loads of potential. Is there a way of getting both Pookie and Rhodes in the team as two strikers? I know we've done it with Pookie kind of sitting as a 10 or a left yes. winger, but... stop playing two central defensive midfielders. We don't need it. We, do, we don't need it. It's so negative. We're Norwich City. We're not... We don't need to go... I, this is what frustrates me. Why... Uh, again, maybe this is because we were sold something when Danny Farker came in, but I feel like with the current players that we've got, we should be picking games up by the scruff of the neck, just like Leeds just like yeah. Wolves did last year, and be attacking teams. Why not? We've got the capabilities. We've got the pacey wins. Although Wolves played with last season one up front as well. Absolutely, Dan. But what they did is they went for it. Yes, they, they did. They absolutely yeah. went for it. And I think that it's it's very it's very sensible and safe. Mm-hmm. And I'm okay with that when you're playing good teams like Leeds, like Middlesbrough. I get that. But when you're playing a team like Wigan at home, for example... Take the handbrake off. Yeah. yeah, give it a go. Get the fans up on their feet. Let's, let's have... Let's have a game. It's almost as if, you know, Farkas had such a difficult start. Yes, 100%. At the moment he's thinking, OK, I'm winning games mm-hmm. 1-0. Let's not rock the boat. Let's just respect be cautious. Well. Definitely. Keep the 1-0s coming. Definitely. Let's not risk trying to win games yeah. 2 and 3 and 4 because it might go wrong again. Mm. So um, I think there is caution on Farkas' side. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm a man who likes to see two up front as well. So And maybe we'll see it. Maybe... If we keep winning or drawing, by the way, I'd t- definitely take two draws in the next two games. If we keep the results coming in, maybe we can, as Dan says very well, l- let's just take the handbrake off a little bit. Let's just try something mm. more yeah. aggressive. Let's try and build our goal difference. Let's not just, let's not just settle and, and hope. You, you forget, 1-0 is, is not a safe scoreline. And actually, neither is 2-0 when you're in Norwich City. But 1-0, anything can happen. Any defender can always make a mistake, even the Norfolk Marcelo. So, you know, you, you need to be trying to trying to bang the goals in early doors. You do feel, though, though Dan, we, we had a similar run like this last season um, and it all sort of derailed. Do you think there will come a, there will sort of come a point when Farker needs to change something tactically in order to keep progressing in this league? And is that going well, yeah. to up front? Well, I think as long as they're winning games as they are right now, he won't change much because he'll think, well, why won't you? But do you think that will continue? <laughs> will teams find us out? Well, that's the danger, isn't it? Um, and then we'll see just how brave Farker is and if he has learned anything across the last year and a half. Mm. But um, I think right now, <coughs> excuse me, he'll kind of keep things the way it is and maintain the status mm. quo and, and play for those 1-0s. And, 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 that's, fine, that's, and that's fine for the time being. Yeah. Final question from Twitter. Peter Hunter, will we win the league before March? <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, go on then. Yeah? You love it? No, no way. Right, thank you to everyone for their Twitter questions as always. Let's quickly look ahead to this week's games. It's Derby away on Wednesday night. They currently sit ninth in the table. Sorry, 
Frank Lampard's Derby oh, County. I was going to say, Jack, um, how dare you? Chris, a, a good team. Who's the manager again? Is it Frank Lampard? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or is it Marcelo Bielsa's lead? Yes. Yeah. So, um, Derby, good team, yet to find consistency. Arguably our toughest test for a while, though. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's always a, it's always a difficult game for Norwich, both home and away. When when, Dar- when when we come up against Derby, and I don't know what it is. I definitely think they've had, they've had good players. Derby, I mean, we say famously on this podcast, of course, Birmingham are Birmingham, but actually, you could say the same thing for Derby. Derby are Derby. Every season they look good. <laughs> Every season on paper they're going to win the league. Every season we think they've got everything right, things are happening, and then they get in the playoffs and they completely crumble. <laughs> For me, I'm always worried playing playing Derby, but if if that's, I, what what is going? I don't get it. How have they failed so many times when they've been within so touching close, distance? So close, so many times. Yeah. What is it? And you look at they've had so many good managers as well. Yeah, really good managers. Absolutely. Steve and Steve McLaren. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they've <laughs> thing about Derby is they have so many good players and they've had those good players for years. Yeah. And I'm not sure what it is, but every single season. They'll have a blip, be it the playoffs or be it at the end of the yeah. season when they just wobble and then they fall away. But you're right, I mean, they are a team who can beat most teams on their day and it'll be tough for Norwich this one. I'll tell you who I hate with a burning passion and I'm stunned that he's, he's still playing football. Richard Keogh. Talk to me about that. Been there for years, hasn't he? What, what is that? How is, it, how is he still doing it? Elaborate. Done. Proper old school centre half, Richard but, Keogh. I don't even think he's old school, is he? I just think he's just done. Just old. Yeah. Fair play to him, obviously, but and stuns. A, and of course, uh, another player that Derby County squad boasts is a certain Martin Waghorn. Will he start on Wednesday night? We shall see. Um, a player obviously did well down there, didn't he? But um, yeah, Derby team. It's almost like a kind of strikers Bermuda Triangle because suddenly kind of go there. <laughs> it is, isn't it? You know, yeah, they're going to go there and yeah. don't really. I mean, Chris Martin was in, he was okay for a while. Um, yeah. Chrissy Martin. Vidra. Um, Banned all, from all the pubs and Deerham. Yeah. All these players who get a derby, yeah. strikers who you know have great reputations yep. and they'll do well for a while yep. and, and then vanish. Darren Bent was another one yeah. that went there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe Waghorn will be another one to kind of, you know, go there and, and just vanish. Speaking of Waghorn, I did very much enjoy on my way to Ipswich seeing loads of Ipswich fans with Waghorn on the back that that did fill me with a lot of um, joy there's a German word for that by the way joy in someone else's pain Schadenfreude Schadenfreude there you have it Daniel Farker will resonate with that one just throw it out there yes or no Darren Bent to Ipswich on a free oh dear well yes do I want it will it happen I don't know. I mean, I saw him doing some TV the other week yeah. for the Premier League's TV Quite channel. Possibly, so possibly, because they need it. Taking your work. Take, well, taking look of honest pros like <laughs> myself, yeah. But, uh, no, I mean, look, when he was there as a young boy, he, he was a very good player. Um, yeah, agreed. But, I mean, last season it was at Burton, wasn't he? Didn't work out there. Yeah. So, I don't think I don't think he's a player that can make an impact at Ipswich this season. I think Ipswich is his level, 100%. I think he's found his level at Ipswich. I'm not, honestly, I'm not just saying it. Burton, come on. He's found his level at Ipswich. Yes. And, and Ipswich desperately need experience. It's true. I'm not even being harsh. It's true. Following on from Derby, Stoke. Uh, another interesting case here, Dan. 17th in the table. Shouldn't Gary be there. Hasn't really got them going yet. Well, you say they shouldn't be there. They've looked, they've looked poor a lot this season. On paper, that squad is probably the best in the division. Yeah. Um, on paper. On paper, yeah, exactly. But, you know, Butland, the goalkeeper. Your type of phobie who... Who they got from Wolves? Yeah. At this level, a proven striker, hell of a player. Um, it's a very, very strong squad. But I mean, people like Glenn, Glenn Johnson are still there. Yeah. Um, Ashley well, Williams. Yeah, it's it's Bojan. a Bojan. Yeah. Bojan squad. I mean, you know, player who was at Barcelona, the kind of next Messi, basically, and mm. now playing for Stoke's reserve team. Mm. Um, but I think Stoke are a team. They'll climb the table. Um, yeah. Maybe even at this stage, it's too late for the top two. But I think certainly Stoke will be in that mix coming into the season, and um, that game's here at Carroll Road. That will be, be a tough one. Tell you what, if, uh, honestly, I, I'd be very interested to see um, to see what their fans think about this. So if you're watching them, please do comment below. How long are they going to give their manager? Gary Rowett, yeah. Um, Seriously, because at the moment, yeah. with that squad, Dan, I think you're right. I the think, best team. I think Rowett is a manager. I When he was um, when Alex Neal was here, I thought he'd be the next Norwich manager because I think mm. he left Birmingham at a time when Norwich were kind of saying, well, maybe mm. we're going to get rid of Alex Neal. And I think he's a good manager. I think he can be a bit direct with his tactics sometimes, but I think it, Stoke, it, it'll, it'll come right for him. Mm. He's, he, he's done well at all his clubs as a manager so far. Burton Albion, uh, Birmingham, when he was sacked, bizarrely, when they were 
on, in the playoffs. Yeah. And um, yeah, even at Derby, I thought he did uh, he did well last season. I think we'll beat Stoke. I do because I, I I think it's a team that that want to play football. I do. As you say, I think he can play direct, but for me, I think they'll they'll want to come and play football, and I think that Norwich will will do well against that. Derby, that you know, I feel like they could be wanting to be off the ball. They want to play as well, but I think I feel like they play with a lot more aggression. Mm. So I think we'll do much better against Stoke than we will against Derby on Wednesday. I night. think best case scenario, a point to Derby, mm. three against Stoke. Yeah, yeah. Back to Gary Rower. Is he the best dressed manager in the league? He likes the old um, Paul Lambert to uh, V-neck and a tie, doesn't he? Yeah. Daniel Farker. Daniel Farker Farker. Well, this yeah. is this is interesting. I'm, you like a stat, Dan. Um, Daniel Farker's Parker. Yeah. Military green. Yeah. 100% win record no. in the military Re- green Parker. Really? Yeah. I wonder if he knows this. You look at the black Parker. Is that why the club's hoodies this year are that green as well? Oh. oh. Yeah. And your yeah, shirt. They've got the green oh. pillow. Oh, maybe that's why I'm wearing green tonight. On a serious note, I like those green polos. They're very good. Plug, plug for Canaries official. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there the black Parker, just a 33.3 percent. What? Record. Hang on. So, but what was the Parker you wore against Millwall? That famous Millwall defeat. Was I that? think no. I think that was a slightly darker shade of green. Dark, darker mm. Parker. Yeah. Was it? Parker's darker Parker. Okay. Good. Well, long may it continue. Get that Parker out. I saw a friend of mine the other day, and he turned up wearing the exact same Parker coat. That Carlos Carvalhal wears with that kind of oh, faux yeah. sheepskin collar. Yeah, not my cup of tea. No either. interest. So, what is the go-to Parker then? What for Parker? <laughs> for any for you, Dan. Uh, don't be a nosy Parker about you about my Parkers and no. Uh, yeah, I like that. Oh, but you yeah. often commentate in in sort of cushy warm booths. Don't I you? do. Yeah, yeah. A lot of hard and Chris Gorham out there in, in the elements. Although I will say, I was at Leipzig um, last season in minus ten degrees. Were you? Uh, it was so cold, our mobile phone batteries died on the table. Uh, we, we got brought a cup of coffee and it went cold within two minutes. Wow. And um, yes, and that was the game that I was almost late for because my flight was five hours late. Got to Leipzig to a pitch side live to camera with 30 seconds to spare. Got Boom. there, girl put a bit of makeup on, you're on. Boom. Um, Did you get compensation for the flight? It was, it was terrifying. Mm. Um, I, the, other people paid for flight, so I don't know about that, but um, it was the kind of day when everything went wrong yeah. um, and it's just horrible <laughs> Chris we'll end on this Chris Gorham's commentary notes or Dan O'Hagan's commentary notes <laughs> wow everyone, I everyone to, does it a different way I need to be really careful about this because of course Chris Gorham is a great friend of the, of the TNC podcast can I say can I say a draw am I allowed to say no. that it's a draw we'll give you artistic flair <laughs> and information gained from the notes and think, also range of station reused because I think that's quite important. I think Dan is definitely on top of the artistic flair. I feel like Gorham just kind of gets it on, doesn't yeah. he? I, I insist on the, the same kind of pen. Do you? I actually buy refills because now, they're the only ones I can write with properly. Okay. That small. Yeah. Um, so at home I've got trays and rows of, uh, of these ink refills for these pens because without them I feel lost completely. Do you? Oh yeah. If, if I go to a game and I've left my, my pens at home yeah. Whoa, whoa! I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm not in my zone. And I was doing a game the other day with. Um, it's like what I did to Karen Day by my Mars bar. I'm doing a game with um, Sean Dundee, ex Liverpool striker, yeah. a few days ago, and he took my pen. Oh, like, whoa, whoa! I'm putting that back after the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't touch the pen. I find the the commentator's stationary choice is fascinating, Chris. Of course, Chris Gorham buys the same notepad every year. Okay, um, yeah. the red and black notepad. We are creatures yeah. of habits. Mm. Absolutely. You know, all commentators have an exact way of doing it themselves and no two prepare for games the same way. Mm. Um, we all prepare in the same depth, but everyone does it in a different way. I wish I could find a way that was quicker because it takes so much time. Mm. But um, mm. we're saying this at the weekend, actually, some of us, that um, if you don't prep the way you prep normally, you feel very exposed and quite naked yeah. commentating. So not only not literally, <laughs> um, not even with the party. Not in Germany, I was going to say. But, goodness so, gracious, Dan. Yeah, exactly. No, you're a good-looking man. <laughs> so, <laughs> blimey, O'Reilly. So, yeah, so we all prepare differently. But, um, yeah, Chris has his way, which works for him, and I have my way, and that works for me. So it's all all good. Good. Pleasure to have you on, mate. Real, Real pleasure. pleasure. Real Cheers, pleasure. Dan. Uh, yeah, thank you for everyone for watching. Go and subscribe on iTunes, our link. What would you like, your Instagram or your Twitter? Twitter, at Dan O'Hagan. At Dan O'Hagan. Go and follow. Um, Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye.